What's going on, everybody? What is going on? It is Saturday, March 9th, 2024, and we are back with a midday stream. But as y'all can see by the title, I am not alone doing this particular midday stream today. I believe history is being made because I think this is like the first midday stream I've ever done on my channel where it is a collab with another person. But before we go ahead and get into that and bring the person up who I will be collabing with today, make sure y'all, if you have not done so already, to go ahead and hit that like button, hit that share button. If you are new to the channel, I welcome you. Glad you were here. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat right now. Shout out to everybody on Patreon. Shout out to all the members of the channel. Shout out to all the people over on X, formerly known as Twitter instagram and discord and everybody who sends me stories i greatly appreciate your contributions i'm going to go ahead ahead now and acknowledge the people who are here so far in the chat and then i will bring up the guest mark bruce wayne brown janesta coleman phoenix dawn x77 acquired taste craig colson jerry bedford robert c big chris three Till Dog 12, Cosima Fury, Wallow J, Savion Draco Zero, Denise Scales, Grape Shot, Iron Will, Derek Parker, RDRD, K5T, and K5LTA, Wilson's Four, Patricia Jones, SD Johnson A57, Antoine Austin, RC, David, DSM Sinister, Natasha Holiday. And oh, and Tawana Cook, shout out to Tawana again for sending all of those amazing stories. Like I said, I may not be able to get to every last one of them, but I try to tackle as many as I can. Now that we have gotten all of the acknowledgements out of the way, and shout out to Jad Bad and Damon Reese who just popped in, I'm going to go ahead now and bring up um, my guest who no, who really needs no introduction. I mean, you just saw him go live. If y'all are subscribed to me, most likely y'all are subscribed to him. As a matter of fact, most of the people that's in here right now are familiar with this person. They've been on my channel before. I've been on their channel before. They actually just went live about an hour and a half ago. So, and they are back on here right now. So without further ado, let me bring up Kid Gravity. What's going on? Before we get into this education, would you like to see an exclusive video of Candace Owens showing how black she was this past Wednesday? <laughs> Go ahead. Hello, y'all. <laughs> she let out the hair. It went curly. And she couldn't get a real bandana, so she got the, the kente cloth, and she tied it like Tupac. <laughs> so, Yes. On the hump day, she had her blackest week ever. Why you got on that Shirley Murdoch wig? I mean, listen, <laughs> ain't, this, ain't this how the, the female coons be be rocking their head when they ain't in front of white supremacy? Shoot, they probably do that when they are in front of it. Shit. But you know, she not from the soil, so she's yeah, from the Caribbean. So I couldn't get a I couldn't get a St. Thomas flag that quick because they said like mm -hmm. three days because you know, prime and all that. So I had to use the Kente cloth. Right. <laughs> but you yeah. got to use the kente cloth first before you can try to come back to the black community. You got to show them that you're a, you're, you're going through the pan African sector. Mm -hmm. Well, many people in the chat are suggesting that she was never here, and I tend to I agree. Mean, well, before you got to remember, no, she was here until the NAACP gave her her check, and then she said, "This is a zoom." Mm -hmm. So it was a temporary stay. Oh yeah. She she mm -hmm. held up that check and she's like, Mr. White Man. <laughs> and it's funny you just did that little dance because it, when we get when we get over to the, the sharing of the video in the first part that it shows, she literally has her arms up like that, trying to dance. Y'all will see what we're talking about when we get to mm -hmm. it. So it is so cringe, y'all. It is so cringe. But the reason why we are here today. And I had to ask Kid Gravity to come and do this collab with me because I could have easily did this by myself. He could have easily did this by himself. But you know what? It's best that you have two people who are part of the new black media who have grilled this woman until she looks like the like the like used charcoal Oof. to the point where it says, you know what? Let's just come together and roast her collectively and then let's do it live because i know that we have some comedians in this chat i know we do i'd be like i'd be cracking that's why i can't look at the chat too much because i know it'll throw me off and now i got this dual screen so it's easy for me are to get thrown off are we allowed to call you Torian o'reilly 
<laughs> Your life. Oh nah. <laughs> nah don't do that. I want hey, no so can I promote something real quick? What's that? After y'all are done with this show, we're going to go live again today, folks. That's right. At 2 30. Because she went to go see Fresh and Fit. And I, I gotta get a piece of that. <sighs> My goodness. Oh yeah, I gotta get a piece of that. Okay. Hey, but how do you how do you like the 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 Kente the Kente bandana? Do you like it? <laughs> um it looks rather cheap. Something I'm sure she's I mean, well aware we could, of. We, we could go back to her native roots. <laughs> we could do that one time. <laughs> yeah, she ain't going straight too far away from that at all. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And the crazy part about it is Candace never wore her hair like that. She's never worn her hair like that, ever. I doubt she ever would either. Nah, never. Mm -mm. That that's Hi, too that, that that's too eth that's too ethnic for her. <laughs> you will not disrespect my cousin like that. <laughs> but yeah, y'all. So the reason why we are up here is because Candace, on the second to last day, the woman didn't even have the decency to know that there was a leap year. But on the second to last day of Black History Month, she posted up this video on her channel called I'm having the blackest week ever. So let me go ahead and share the screen right quick so y'all can see this. Now I want y'all to get a good understanding right quick. She is a, and I put this in quotations, a black woman. She's black identified, she's black in ethnicity, but she probably doesn't even go around claiming her blackness and it is what it is. I'm not expecting her to do so. But she posted up a video on her channel called I'm Having the Blackest Week Ever. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, she's a quote unquote black woman. And she says she's having the blackest week ever. That sounds like someone that should come from someone who is not black and would say that or put something out there like that. Or someone who I'm such as herself is having a clear cut identity crisis. Mm. Like that was how did she have thing. an identity? Good question. I don't think this woman has mirrors at home. Uh, I really well, don't. She is rich, so she probably got one of them false ones. <laughs> and if she does, it's a filthy mirror. That thing needs to be cleaned. Or might well, you know she don't use Windex, it. right? Because according to her, that'll probably mess. It probably has stuff in there that it has those uh, V's as well. The same ingredients. Oh, hold on! Before we go any further. Shout out to Dana Mitchell for the oh, honey now. Thank you, Mr. Rain and Mr. Gravity. We I got called Mr. That is awesome. I appreciate it, Dana. Yes, Thank you. Dana. Thank you hey, so much. Do you know how many protein waffles you just bought this man? And, and protein <laughs> pancake mix you just bought this I man? I still actually actually had some this morning. <laughs> See what I mean? I actually had some this morning. I was actually able to make four of them, so I had two this morning, and I'm gonna have to save two for tomorrow. You know, yes, sir. you know, make gotta make a stretch. Yeah, but, I'm going uh, back to the gym tomorrow too. And I actually went to the gym this morning. I know you did. Yeah, but yeah, so that's one thing right here that she posted up, in, you know, in the title. But let's look at. Did you see the description? Let's look at the yes. description. In the description, it is saying, "I am having the blackest week ever." I got two positive headlines in black media. First off, did they come from us? Because if they come from us, I highly doubt that they were positive. So I'm trying to figure out what black media is she referring to because it, it ain't us. No. Uh, then, she, Jason Whitlock. then she goes on to say, and I have several black media appearances lined up. Uh, KG, did she, did, you, did she reach out to you? No. Nope. Did she reach out she, to you? Oh, hell no. I blocked her. <laughs> what about Afro? Did she reach out to Afro? I, I doubt it. Black Alpha Network? No. Jason Black? Mm -mm. Tariq? Well, nope. we already know she don't like Tariq. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. She didn't go to Gavin Richard. She didn't go to Harvey. She didn't go to Thought Crimes. Didn't go to Blacklight. Basically, went she to went to Roland. Nah, she didn't go to Roland. Basically, she went to people who will let her get her shit off. And or let her say what she wanted and without any pushback. I guess. I then, still want to know who this is. 
Right. I hopefully we find out, you know, in this eight minute and 42 second video. Okay. Um, then she ends it off with saying, plus after an appearance on Piers Morgan by Piers Morgan on the Breakfast Club, I'm guessing the Breakfast Club was her black media outlet. And it's just, it really seems like black America is waking up. We already know what she means when she says that last part right there, when she said yes, black I'm America person, is waking I'm up. I'm from St. Thomas descent. Okay. Shout right. out to St. Thomas. Y'all got problems down there. <laughs> Right. So we're going to start playing the video. Now I have to tell the chat I had to mute the first part of this video because it is copyrighted music. She is playing Juicy by Biggie. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's what she's dancing to. Right but here. isn't it Juicy? ironic she picked a Caribbean artist? And I want to know how long did it take her to learn the lyrics? I just, hard. Want, I, I just want I, I just want to know how long it took her to like get those lyrics down before she came on here and made this video. Now remember the last time Candace was dancing or singing to some rap music or acknowledging hip hop was during the Super Bowl. What was it last year? Not last year, the year before. Was it last year? The Which year one? Before? Rihanna? No, not not Rihanna. The one we get before that with all the hip hop artists. You know, oh, her, you okay. know all yeah, of them. Yeah. And, and, and remember the last time she did that, her audience got on her about that. Mm -hmm. They had to they had to bring her off the ledge because you know. She, they, they couldn't have their prized pet be engaged in what they call jungle music. Mm -hmm. So well, well, you couldn't have Jason. Jason Aldean wasn't a thing yet. He No, he wasn't. <laughs> and even he had to come out and check them. <laughs> I thought yep. that was so funny. Yep. He said, how y'all going to bastardize my song that way? <laughs> yeah, all right, dude. <laughs> and shout out and shout out to the 211 people that's in here so far. We only been live for about what? 16 minutes and we haven't I haven't even pressed play yet on this video so the first couple of minutes the first not minutes but seconds I have to mute it because it is playing juicy by Biggie and I'm not trying to get that email from YouTube even on mute it's cringe y'all oh I know but remember I showed you that video where she was dancing trying to do line dancing and she was clapping off beat mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, just think about what we just saw in the first 10 seconds, how she was moving. <laughs> yeah. Remember that video I mean, that you showed when she was supposed to be doing, when she was supposed to be line dancing? Yeah, it was it clapping off beat and she wasn't even, clapping how you have Ben Shapiro dance better than you? Mm. Now, keep this in mind, this. What, but keep in mind what's in the bottom left corner, Daily Wire Plus. Now, this woman is talking about she had the blackest week ever. She talked to people in black media and all this type of stuff, but she's still attached to Daily Wire, which we know is anti-black. Mm -hmm. Why? Why does it look like on her face she's thinking about the 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 pink the pink thing? Uh, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say the word on your platform. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. So or I think pumpkin she got, spice lattes. I don't know. I think she got the song out. Let me see if she did. really does still slap you guys why am i playing it because well i told you i am still having slapped. the blackest week ever and she's having the blackest week ever you and the song still, still slaps still having the blackest week ever still slaps. Ever. and it slaps still having why she's really trying ever. hard to be a california valley girl she's really trying hard to be a california <laughs> valley girl i but don't no, get what it is is no what it is is she's she's a barbie girl still stuck <laughs> in a barbie world <laughs> Well, this is the same woman who had her baby shower and she was put in the back in front of in, for the, all the white women. <laughs> in that song, he talks about his mom, loves to show him off, smiles every time my face is up in the source. Well, guess what, guys? My face is up in the source. Check out these oh, headlines. God. I've been just really what happened? Oh God. She can't even read she can't even read lyrics correctly. That's why I told you how long did it take for her to learn these lyrics? She did not know these lyrics probably up until about maybe about the week before she made this video. I want to see this song. Juicy has been out since the since 94. I need to see her playlist. I don't want to see her play. I got to see it. No, I got to see it. <laughs> I need to see that playlist on that Apple music. I got to see it. See what you did, Candace. Now you made poor Jennifer Wade in the chat saying her say that she don't like that song anymore. And that's a classic. Once and that's Biggie a classic said that song. line, that that infamous line. I, I I don't play his music no more. Hmm. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not doing that. He goes where Eminem is at. 
And he's from New York, y'all. So y'all can't say he doesn't like New York rappers. Yeah. I think they better really than trying. DMV. <laughs> what he was that? Kick me off. I said they better than DMV rappers. Now you're going to kick me off the show. I know. Hey, that is your opinion. Say less. And, and before we go any further, shout out to King Kovey 313 Super chat. He said, when is she going to stop getting screen time when, when the grift ends for her? When you like, See, you like to tell him the date? November the 5th. Mm. Like I tell people, we could go a whole, a, a long period of time and not talk about Candace Owens and she will still get screen time. Why? Because she still has those grifting supporters on her side. But when her grift ends and hopefully it crashes and burns like Stacey dashes, then that's when you won't see her anymore. That, that's why I keep telling people Candace has gotten moments over the years, but she hasn't gotten the moment. When I say the moment, the quintessential moment for her is going to be when she uh, crashes out like can like Stacy Dash did. That is when you'll know Candace Owens is done. When it gets to that point, when she can not recover from anything that she tries to do, her grifting days are done. They're moved on to the next person to quote unquote support. Trying to get into black media and have them say something nice about me, and it happened. This first from the source, Candace Owens on Beyonce's country music. She's more country than Taylor Swift ever was. Now I remember. See, remember she did say that. But yes. we know why she said it too. Mm. Which y'all is which that's why I titled the video the way I did. I said it's Candace Owens trying to enter her sister girl era. This video so far, and we're not even a minute in, already told me everything I need to know going forward for the next seven minutes and some change. She's trying to pander to a audience of people that she has shunned over the years, which is us. But we're not buying her because the thing is, she's been off code for so long. She thinks we're just going to gravitate towards her. We don't care if you say Beyonce's country music or she's more country than Taylor Swift ever was. You don't have to tell people that because many people are going to say, oh, you know, I probably said in their minds, oh, maybe, you know, she is. But they didn't have to hear from you is the right. point. Exactly. But, you know, let her tell it. She's basically going to be trying to tell us stuff we already been talking about. Like, she's late to the party. Much like how she was with that song and still messed up the lyrics. <laughs> how do you do that? I ask her. She did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Next headline over here in Vibe. And then look on where she got it from, the source. <laughs> That's I, guess the other because, I guess it's because, um, what's the name? Uh, Benzino was trending. <laughs> anyway. Candace Owens defends Beyonce. Then she got, then she went to Vibe. Vibe is not even black owned anymore. It really isn't. But we know why she went to the source and to Vibe because, you know, I don't know. Is the source still black owned? Benzino still got it. Okay. Yeah. But Vibe hasn't been black owned for years. But we yeah. know why she went there because Vibe, of course, at one time was black owned. Right. It was one I wonder of those... if she's going to whip out Jet next in Ebony. <laughs> Says she's more country than Taylor Swift. Yes, guys, two positive headlines we are celebrating because I also have a ton of media booked up. Look, this is a picture of me and Joe Budden yesterday. It actually happened. We sat down. I'm going to tell you about that discussion. I don't think it's going to air for another. He's a cab driver. <laughs> you said what? Why does Joe Budden look like a 1920s cab driver? What is <laughs> he this? Kinda, he kind of does. Negro. What are you wearing, this, sir? This, 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 no, this is what happens when people who are a part of a particular generation is still trying to keep up with people of like two generations behind them. Or I guess, them. Well, you're brother, behind them. Yeah. Brother Torian, why is he why did he dress up for her? I don't know because you've seen how uh Joe Button has dressed he lax in his place. Yeah, went for his uh for his podcast. And he never dresses like that. Oh, come on, bruh. What is this? You look like you got this from Jonathan Majors. What is this? Y'all even match You know what? Shoes? As crazy as that comment is, it sound is pretty accurate. That does look like something Jonathan Majors would wear. Man. And shout out to and shout out to Scoop 2003 for the $5 super chat. Somebody he said she needs to give her drop. black skin back. She didn't earn it. Huh? Somebody, time, time out nightfall drop. That is way off code. No one wants to see that. I don't want to see that, bro. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, that's a very interesting fashion choice he chose. But I mean, fine, whatever he has to wear it, not me, not you, or anyone else in this chat. 
I just love how she always leaves her husband and kids to go do something. Notice she never takes any pictures in public with her husband or kids. Facts. Well, we know why with with the kids. We well, know. we know why with the kids, but never with her husband. Yeah, but <laughs> he always she always running somewhere where some man is. And do you notice a lot of times it be other black men? Facts. Joe Button here. Goddamn. Um, Charlemagne he, he went, somewhere else. Charlemagne. She went. She flew all the way to Paris with Kanye. Mm -hmm. Paris. Hmm. Just an observation. We're not we're not saying it's anything, but it's just an observation. I ain't saying nothing. We're just an observation. But just <laughs> know on March 9th, if something come out that she was cheating with a black man, you know where you heard it first. Allegedly. Mm, let's continue. Yes, sir. And I'm not even gonna play into the comment that Brandon McCullough said because I could I could be real petty with that one. Yeah about that discussion. I don't think it's going to air for another week, but I'm going to give you guys the scoop. But first, I want to also point to this moment because I do think that this is a sign that something bigger might be happening in Black media. I really do. I think that within Black America, people are starting to listen and to understand that our minds have been polluted, really, uh, to oh, our Lord. own disadvantage. We. Mm -hmm. She's speaking French. Oh, there's the we. I know we don't have your, your sound on here, but yeah. Who is we? <laughs> Who is we? Ma'am, you're not with us. You're not part of the black never, community. Never, okay. never been. Never been. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she said this at the tail end of Black History Month. Literally the tail end. Like, she literally did it the day before the last day. She could have said this at any other time. But like I said, her titling it, I'm having the blackest week ever, and she's, quote, unquote, black herself. That is very telling in and of itself. Because a black person doesn't have to go around talking about I'm having the blackest week ever. You're practically living the black experience being a black person every single day that you're alive. Right. But OK, but see, again, this is coming from a woman who is so distant from us. And she thinks saying what she's saying right now and playing Biggie at the beginning while messing up the lyrics after the fact is her proximity to whiteness i mean to blackness like i said that's typical of a person who isn't black who's trying too hard to uh to be in but they're not <laughs> she better tap dance back they have been the protesting right she don't have a haven over here sting and looting because we have been lied to routinely and a moment that recently happened was that Piers Morgan sat down with Charlemagne the God of the Breakfast Club, and he just dropped some facts. It was a wonderful moment. Take a listen to it. You mentioned Obama. So this is an mm -hmm. interesting little question I will throw people. Interesting if you guys know the answer. How many uh, immigrants, illegal immigrants, did Barack Obama deport in his eight years as president? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Have a guess. No clue. No clue. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? Ray, the answer, the answer is over three million. He was known as deporter in chief by Mexicans. Yes, and right. that was more than Trump. He deported way more than yeah, Trump. He deported that. way more pro rata than any president in history. Who dropped the most bombs in a calendar year in American history? Oh, I, come on, President Barack Obama. Barack Obama, yeah, yeah, right, no including drone programs mm -hmm. and so on. Right, who got elected in 0809 on shutting down Guantanamo Bay? Because as a former lawyer, he believed it was an illegal uh, institution. President Barack Obama. Obama. Yeah. What is still open today? Guantanamo Bay. Correct, right? I know that the general thing is Obama angel. Trump devil, right. but if you actually apply the scrutiny that we give Trump, put it this way, if Trump had deported 3 million people, you think you guys wouldn't know that answer? Of course you would, mm -hmm. right? Nobody knows that answer because nobody thought that way about St. Barack. I we got to say it towards that. Now, before you go in, before you go in, DSB, shout out to you for the $2. He says she's mocking the black community every chance she gets. But go ahead, um, KG. He he's really sitting. Okay, you educating Charlemagne on this should tell you one thing. He don't. He's not what he is. But that's fine. Piers Morgan. Everybody knew this already, sir. You're not telling us anything new. You're just telling us you're 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 part of MAGA. That's exactly. all I got out of that clip. And and she's about to put him over, and say of how course. smart he was. You you see how she prefaced it before she even um. Bought it up. She said, oh, he dropped so many facts. And guess what? There was another person who dropped so many facts, allegedly. And where they mm -hmm. at now? We're not going to say his name. He went on the same show and dropped these supposed facts. And where is he now? 
Mm-hmm. I, I can't, man. <laughs> they, they're so 20 years late to the party and they act like they just knew. They, they know everything. But now, I, keep this in mind, y'all. She titled this video, I'm having the blackest week ever, but she just sat up here and praised a white man from overseas in Britain for coming over to the establishment to sit down with two black men to quote unquote school them about what Barack Obama did during his presidency, but she's having the blackest week ever. Yeah. That's why I said the bit that the title of her video is such an oxymoron. And it's very clickbaitish too. Can you drop the oxy? Oh, <laughs> moronic. <laughs> it's just moronic. Oh, and it's crazy too, because one thing I also did was I'm looking at the title of the video and I said, let me go and look at some of the comments that people left. And when I saw the comments they left, that's what I that's when I knew. And then I mind you, I hadn't watched the video yet, that she said some bullshit. Mm. Because I mean, we I mean, know, because we know if she came at it from an angle, like say how we would have came at it from, the comment section would look a whole lot different. Yes. Did anybody mention Thomas Soul? I you know what? I think I did see someone mention his name. In, in her comment section. <laughs> now that you met, now that you bring it up, whenever I see that, I'm like, oh god, let me get out of here. I already know what kind of crowd I'm dealing with. When it, where's the Breakfast Club gonna have on Thomas Soul? Right. Oh god, please. No, no. Well, I mean, if they want to have him on, I could kill us because I don't watch the Breakfast Club anyway. So let them have at it. I already know it's gonna be a bunch of crap anyway. Let's yeah. get back into it. Yes, sir. I love that moment so much for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, the fact that they are open to hearing it, right? Because you have certain people within Black America that are just deemed untouchable, and for whatever reason, Barack Obama is, which means that the media and their celebration of Obama, oh, he's so wonderful because he hmm? What? What do you mean Obama's untouchable? What do you... T what? <laughs> Ma'am, where have you been the last eight years? Where? Black people done turned on him. They don't even bring up his wife anymore unless it's a racist saying how she's a man. It's white people trying to make her the Democrat nominee, not us. Every time that's put up there, you see black people say, we don't want this motherfucker around. Exactly. Oh my God. The only Obamas they we actually still sort of protect are the daughters. Mm -hmm. And remember what? Who was that that recently said something about their daughters? Called them oh, yeah. hood rats. Who was yeah, that? that was, um, that, what's that asshole's name? Oh, there's so many white supremacists. That's a problem. I, I, know. I know. Oh my god, I know. I, I see his face. Oh, that that was it. That Carmine Sabia person. I forgot who it was, but it was on X, and yeah. some person over there called um. Sasha and Malia Obama hood rats. Oh no, is that Lauren Whitcomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was her. It was a, a PC woman. Go figure. So much she a hood rat. I was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. And they, man, they dragged the hell out of her yes, on sir. X when she said that. I said, I said those two girls were no, some of right. the most tame. No, Ocho was right. Laura Loomer. That's right. Laura, yeah, Laura Loomer. Yep. The woman who looks like she is Howard Stern. She, well, I was going to say that she looks like she's the child of Chucky and Tiffany. Howard Stern. But yes, Chucky and Tiffany would, would mm -hmm. not. Now, Tiffany, never mind. <laughs> never, never mind. More so, when, more so when Tiffany was in the bride of Chucky rather than the seed of Chucky. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> He speaks well, was able to cast a spell. That's the truth. Cast a spell in Black America, made us believe that this was a, a champion for our rights. Meanwhile, there are our rights. Who did she go again speaking French? Mm -hmm. I caught that one. I caught that. You caught that, right? And you fell out of your chair. <laughs> no, I'm still very much attached to the chair. There's nothing really that Candace can say at this point that can shock any of us because she's a one trick pony. And we've seen every trick that she's thrown out there. Like she, like I said, that's why we're not losing it over here because nothing she says is shocking. Now, if this is, if this was years ago when we were just getting introduced to her, then of course we would be flying off at the mouth. Like it's probably cussing like 
pirates. But we're very calm because nothing she ever says at this point in day and age is surprising or shocking to anybody, not even her own supporters, which is why they support her. Oh my God. I just saw an article. You might you you might have to you might have to continue this another day, bro. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the private. We're in the private. Oh, okay. That has dropped more bombs on black and brown people in the Middle East. That is just a fact, and it's something that makes people uncomfortable. Yes, it is huh? a fact that he deported over three million people. And yet when Donald Trump said, I'm just gonna build What bombs did Obama drop black on and black and brown, brown people? On black people. What what bombs did she drop? Did he drop on black people? I missed this. I must have missed it too. Obama dropped bombs on black people? Where? So, so y'all get mad when they talk about color, but you saying black and brown, but you hate when the liberals talk about black and brown. Got it. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Listen, <laughs> un understand this, that Candace has the per capita crowd. That's her. That's my new nickname. That she, that's her audience is the per capita crowd. And shout out to Darlene Brown for becoming a new subscriber. Build the wall, right? I'm going to talk about deportation. People freaked out, called him racist, called him xenophobic. And it was really interesting for me to have sat down with Joe Budden yesterday. I honestly think our interview went on for three hours to really sort of get into that consciousness. What is it that makes you so angry when you see a black Trump supporter? Because that is the source of all of the hatred for me in black America. How dare you support Donald Trump? Does Donald Trump even still acknowledge her? I mean, didn't he just like oh. kind of dismiss her a he couple of years ago? Her. Yeah, he flipped her. He kind of he kind of shooed her. He kind of shooed her away. And I'm glad that we stopped right here because she said something that myself and you and plenty of others have said when it comes to these uh, Trump supporters who happen to be black. Did Candace Owens not see what happened at that black conservative federation thing a couple weeks ago and how he was sure talking to them? Yeah. What, she probably was. Was she even there? Was she there? No. Okay, no, she, that, that, that would have been the highlight. Everybody would have been like, "Oh God, Candace Owens was it?" You know, Candace Owens ain't going to know South Carolina. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have when it comes to black um, black Trump supporters, much like herself, is that they kiss his ass so much to the point where they are ready to drop all of their morals for this dude. I mean, look, perfect example: Terrence K. Williams. Oh, that God. man has a whole shrine dedicated to 45 on his page to the point where whenever something good turns out for Trump, I already know without even having to go to his page to see what he says. Or I bad. know he's going to have something to post up there. Much or like bad. that. Well, that's that too. Yeah, because when he like, got indicted, you saw what he wrote, right? <laughs> mm hmm. But yeah, that, that's the problem we have with them. And then on top of that, it's like you have certain people that would want to go over there or probably want to support. But it's like, damn, do I if I do this, I'm going to end up attaching myself to the likes of a Terrence K. Williams or a Candace Owens or a Brandon Fakum or any of those other clowns that's over there. It's like, damn, now I'm part of that tribe. Do I really want to be a part of it? And the thing is, if you try to distance yourself from it, like Pastor Darrell Scott, then they then that's when they come at you with those tiki torches and pitchforks like they did in Charlottesville back in 2017. Yes, sir. And they'll say, you're not MAGA. Well, guess what? Neither are you. Need I remind you of those two women, those two black women that got clowned out of that X space a couple weeks ago? That was a by an, Asian. P by an Asian man. <laughs> Not a white man. A white man was the one who brought them in, but he, but the Asian man was asking that white dude, "Why were you? Why did you bring them here? Why are they here?" I don't want you bringing no more of these effing people in my space again. Exactly. And the thing is, that, that Asian man didn't care what they had to say. By the time he got to the end of what he had to say, all he had to tell them two women when they were just yapping off at the mouth, "Bye, bye, get yeah. out, get out." That's all he had to say. That, that, that's all. And, and guess what they did? They got out. Yeah, and then she said, "I got a nationally ready syndicated radio show." I'm like, that, "Okay, that, man, that, that nobody that nobody that nobody knows about." Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can ask anybody who I know from Chicago, and they're probably like, "Who? What radio show? And who was this DJ? Who was she?" Right. 
And then you say, oh, she's on WGN radio. We don't listen to that. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> All right. When the media told us that he was bad, how dare you not say great things about Obama when the media told us that he was great? And to go through that process and to recognize this alarming paradox within Black America that we are the most politically incorrect individuals, if you, if you just want to assess our culture. She said we again. <coughs> and our culture. She said so we, got a so we got a we followed up with in our culture. Can we get a beret for her? <laughs> what color? Gray and black. <laughs> a gray and black beret. Yeah. Mm. And our music. And yet when it comes to politics, we demand political correctness. We demand to be lied to. And I said that to Joe Budden when, when he said, oh, even if that's true. She says we demand to be lied to. The same could be said about the other side, too. Because what do I tell? What do I? What's my nickname for them? Pa lie trictions. There's not that many honest politicians out there. Unfortunately, we lost one of them. Was it last week? R.I.P. to Eric Mays. Yes. We lost one a few years, several years ago. R.I.P. to Marion Barry. But there's very few honest politicians that are going to keep it real with their constituents, even right. if, you, if even if they do get paid handsomely. Facts. But she said we 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 want to get regarding a situation. Who? No, that's what she wants to do, and that's what she does. Right. If she likes to get lied to, and she likes to do the lying. Situation pertaining to Donald Trump, even if that's true, he shouldn't say it. I pressed him on that. I pressed him. I said, so what are you saying? Are you suggesting that we should be lied to? Are you suggesting that it's good to be lied to as long as it sounds good? And I think you'll, you'll find his answer to that to be pretty interesting. And that really is the question for all Americans right now. Does it make us uncomfortable to hear the truth? Yes. But would we rather be told lies? I think for a lot of people, yeah, they, they just want to exist in their little bubbles. They want to believe that everything that America is doing overseas is irrelevant or it is furthering democracy. We're spreading democracy because it's scary. It's scary to go the other way. It's scary to recognize that there is an entire system of, honestly, what I believe to be sheer evil that is operating above us. It's scary to consider that the CIA might be completely corrupt. It's scary to consider that they may have been the people that made the decision to have a sitting president killed, JFK Jr. It's scary to consider that they may have had everything JFK to do Jr. with the assassination. What? Hmm? JFK Jr.? Oh, Lord. Uh -huh. She said JFK Jr. Oh, my God. So a you just figured out. A sitting, pre a sitting president, y'all. JFK, JFK Jr. Jr. A, a sitting president. <laughs> That was like when somebody the other day said that RFK was president. I was like, when? Just when was like RFK when, senior president? Just like when, when 45 had acknowledged Frederick Douglass like he was still alive. Oh, my God. Ma'am, um, everybody's known the CIA has been corrupt. What are you talking about? She said it's scary to think that the CIA is corrupt. Are you serious? The CIA does black ops all over the world, man. They're already corrupt. Why do you think in the movies they use the FBI? They don't use the CIA because people are gonna never mind. That, like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down that road. Like I, like I said, she gets on here and she says stuff that we already know about, <laughs> like we don't know, and she talks in this tone of like a building block teacher. You see this block right here? This one goes in the circle. This one goes in the triangle. This one goes in the rectangle. This one goes in the square. This one goes in the star. Don't yeah. try to put the square. Don't try to put the star inside of the square, or the square inside of the circle, or the circle inside of the rectangle because they're not going to fit. It's like what you're telling us. You're preaching to the choir. We already know. Like she's trying to make it seem like. See, that's the thing. Going again, going back to the grip, the uh, the uh, the supporter of the grifter, they put people out there like her to quote unquote try to educate us because they think we're dumb, mm -hmm. but they really, but on the back end, the grifter has no idea how much of a useful idiot they are. Yeah, as long as they see those dollar signs, 
they're going to continue to go out there and they're going to continue to grip. That's why we get people like Terrence K. Williams putting stuff online to, you know, to do whatever it is, whether it's some weird dance or whatever he says, you have those white supporters come out there and say, Terrence, you are so entertaining. You are so funny. You know what? Because you were so funny, I'm going to go ahead and buy some of your pancake mix. Mind you, it's the same ingredients that you can get out of the Aunt Jemima box. Okay. I'm sorry, the Pearl Milling Company. No, we could, no, we, we respect her. The Aunt, Okay, the Aunt Jemima box. Same exact ingredients. It might be something slightly different there, but it's mainly 90% the same thing right. and much more affordable. <laughs> and you got to wait. You got to wait for them to ship it to you at least a week. Right. And you're not supposed to wait. You're not supposed to wait that long to get something like a perishable item like that that long to get to yeah. you. Oh, huh, my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> And look, she has that face like she you supposed to know this. Girl, you just learned this two days ago. Cut right. They, right. You probably they probably gave you a script and said, here, Candace. You want to know script. how much she spent her blackest week? What's that? Going after Hollywood. Welcome, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Except mm -hmm. you know, people been doing this since the 60s. 60s. Welcome. Mm. Of Martin Luther King Jr. Oh God, you, it's black she history. It. She's allowed. <laughs> oh, That's what the conservatives the do. Is, in what context is she using it in? I mean, we know, we know what it's context easy. she's using it in. I know, but you want to give it to the family. <laughs> let, let, let's hear the family because I want to see the comments after she says it. Okay, I had to rewind it back a little bit that they may have had everything to do with the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. An insane story of how Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. We have never had answers about that. And yet that same government who could have been involved in that assassination then gives us Martin Luther King Jr. Day as what? Oh, here you are. You're here just to make you happy to show you that you're actually lying. progressing. We're going to give you... Ma'am, you were the same one who was sitting up there saying we don't need Black History Month. And again, here she is telling us something we been known <laughs> i guess this is the next the next part she's going to tell us is that in 1999 dr king's family sued the government and won we've been new to, we've been known that too i mean is there anything else about our history candace that you're prepared to tell us that we don't know Fact. like you're supposed to be some kind of black encyclopedia if you guys ever need an example of how white supremacy takes both sides of the argument here you are Right, like, like, woo! Again, she did this. She uploaded on February twenty eighth, but she's having the blackest week ever. Now, mind you, she's woke. Now she should have said, "I had the wokest week ever." That's what you should have said. Keep now. Keep in mind this: what day did February go out on? Went on on uh, was it Thursday? On a Thursday, so the 29th was on a Thursday. I think, yeah, yeah, I think it was a Thursday. So she didn't even pick the she. So you mean to tell me she picked the last week in a week that didn't even end in February completely, but the one that goes and segues into March? Yeah, so you, she can even have the decency to if she was going to do this to do the week before that way she can have Sunday to Saturday, right. That sounds like a nitpick, but I don't give a damn. No, that, no, no, that, no, that, 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 that's facts. She had she had 27 days before I had to do this. But she waited to the end of the month. This is like the person who works in the group with the project does little to nothing and then is happy they got the A. The little gold star. And then everybody else looking at you and they will just punch you in the mouth. Hmm. You a day off. That's not progress, guys. It's it's stupidity, and the um so she's upset about the day off. Candace, I'm okay, very but it's a law. We'll <laughs> oh, go fight it. It's a law. Exactly, and it's, a, it's something that's been law for how many years now? Like what, almost forty years now? Going on yeah. a little like forty or a little no. more than forty years now? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I can't. I know Reagan signed it into law, but I can't remember what year it was. I know it was the early '80s, but but the thing is, she's upset because she can't take a day off. Keep in mind. When Fact. this woman was like 
getting ready, like getting close to that point where she's about to have her third child. She's still out there, swollen ankles and all, can't see her feet, probably has to have someone help her put her shoes on or put some slides on her Crocs. She's still out there, quote unquote, sticking it to college students. I, you, KG, I don't know about you, but I get tired of seeing the video title. Candace oh, Owens went back. owns college student at this PWI. Candace Owens owns this woke female student Family. at this higher level of in, uh, higher level of learning. Family, it's not that hard to own a college student. It's really not. They're not learned. That's the reason why they're in college. They want they they have a particular interest in a subject. They want to spend four years learning it. It's not that hard. She's catching freshmen and sophomores. Right. You're talking to people who are still like, you know, learning um, on a collegiate level and just got there. Like they and it's always them. like, let's see Candace have this kind of debate with with someone around her age or her age or someone who is her is her senior. She won't because you see what happened. Them Jews begin at it online. She don't say nothing to them. Oh, she knows not to. Because every time she gets ready to say something, they be like, "Up, oh, we gotta pull your little coattail back." Nice. You know, like, you, you, Rabbi you too close giving to the her the blues online. I hate that. I, I saw that. I saw I that, and that I don't blues. like it. I don't like. Oh, I don't like him either. Because you know, she posted up another video after this, talking about in the, in the she was talking uh -huh. about Diddy, Michael Jackson, and somebody else. And I think Rabbi Shmuley's name came up. Yeah, in that video. But did you notice she didn't tag him in it? No, and I saw your post. Tag said, I said, I, I said, I, I said, why do you like why did why didn't you tag him? Because she definitely put Rabbi Shmuley in yeah. her post, but she didn't tag him in it. And, but you know what? So but you know what? But you know what's so crazy? You know what's interesting? I'm sure one of her supporters is probably going to tag him. Oh, I tagged her already. I tagged him already. I was like, I want to see your smoke. Go talk to him. You you were talking big stuff about Israel last year. Go stand up to Rabbi Shmuley. Show me something. But again, you 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 let David Horowitz go outside on you. You didn't say a word, and he low level. But you know, that's who she likes to go after people that she feels are beneath her. Yeah, but I'm saying David Horowitz should be beneath you. I mean, you gotten bigger than him. Go say so. he came out on you. You didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All you did was emotionality. The persistent emotionality. Of was that? All was, no, I was saying all you did was acknowledge that you were part of the Horace Foundation. You didn't go back on him when he was slandering you. All right. Mm. You got it. Not just black Americans, but all Americans regarding topics, but emotionality that is not backed by facts, that is not backed by history, is why the government is able to do these sorts of things. It's why the government is able to completely run over what the people want and to expand and fulfill their own initiatives overseas, even when we don't back it. Look at Ukraine. The American people are saying no. They don't. Who's we? Who? I, I, man. <laughs> so God, I'm, I'm so as far as we as now. as far as we are concerned, we said that is a fight that they have to they they got to deal with that on their own. When they kept trying to drag black people into it, we kept shutting them down every chance they got. And the more and more we shut them down, the more anti-black they became. Remember what Michael Crappaport said and what that mm -hmm. other chick said. What was her name? That other one, that actress. Which one? The one from The Good Wife. Oh, Juliana Margulies. Yeah, Juliana Margulies. We shut both of them down to the point where, well, Michael Crappaport, he's an he's an afterthought. And Juliana Margulies, she tried to come back and clean up what she said. No, you're going to stand on what you said, and we're going to make sure you stand on what you said. And we ain't heard from her since. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, her show was gone, so what else is she going to talk about? Exactly. She you got on that me. podcast and just started spewing off out of nowhere. It's like, y'all just managed to bring us into a conversation we wanted no parts of. We made sure not to incorporate ourselves in there. There might be some people that do jump into it, but if you want to talk to them, you talk to them. Don't talk to the collective. Talking about oh, we of what we got to do. No, we ain't got to do shit. Mm -hmm. Care. They constantly are telling us to get to work because we're going to do what we want anyway. They're operating like a mafia, right? And that's scary for a lot of people to consider because we know what that means. When you, when you are willing to tell the truth, the mafia will take you out, right? But we're coming to a, a place right now. I genuinely she, feel this in my soul. This woman <laughs> literally thinks that she's a truth teller. 
because that's what no, her, no, that's what her audience for, is. What, what's the correct term? Free thinker. Free thinker. Okay, yeah, free thinker. She's a free thinker. She, <laughs> yeah, she really thinks she's a free thinker or an independent thinker. No, you you, you are very robotic. Oh, you God. have that battery shoved so far up your back, there's no room for a hand to move your mouth when you talk. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, y'all, but just to try to hear her talk like us. Mm -hmm. It's. You would think this is a skit. It might as well be one. I'm surprised she didn't have a black fist somewhere. Oh, she she ain't going to go to. She, she ain't didn't she, the edge that far. <laughs> she ain't going to go the black fist <laughs> ever. Fact. If she, if she would have had the blackest week ever, you should have came in a nice leather jacket, you know, the fubu John, maybe a jersey dress. Not a jersey dress might have been that uh, that would have been a perfect aesthetic. A jersey dress, your hair tied up, and, and you got the you got the black fist around your neck. Omar might have fell out of his chair. If she had on a jersey dress on, we would have been asking her what year is this? Is this 2024, 2004? <laughs> Facts. Walk around here in a damn jersey dress. <laughs> she whipped out the Aniche. Oh God. <laughs> or the Peli Peli. <laughs> oh my God. You know what? She probably still rocks eyes on. Damn. I hate this woman, man. You don't understand. Coming out here with these oh. lame Brian fits on, talking shit about black people. <laughs> he said lame. He said lame. <laughs> I said lame, lame Brian Fitz. <laughs> the fuck? And then you coming outside talking shit on black people, and then, and then when them when them folk get at you, you 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 act like, oh, I got something to do now. <laughs> <laughs> My God. I have said this to my husband. I said this. I expressed this to Joe Budden. And I say this to everybody that for the first time, I think people are starting to wake wait, up. Wait, wait, and this wait, was best wait, wait, wait. So you talking to the white man about black problems and then you went to Joe Budden talking about black problems. So you pillow talking black problems with your white husband. How does this mm -hmm. work? Exactly. How does this work? <laughs> mm -hmm. Am I missing something? And I, you know what? I don't know about you, KG, but I've never even heard her husband speak. Oh, he's 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 straight British. I know he's British, but I mean, I've never heard him like he engage in conversation. Like he he don't he ain't got no. He sound like Tom Holland, just like Tom Holland, just like him. Wow, yeah. And that's the voice and coming out short. of someone that's in his thirties, and he's short. They're like the same height. I'm not even bullshitting. <sighs> well, I wonder. Oh, I'm gonna go there with this one. I wonder. Hey, Marie, the... Marie, don't threaten her with a good time with that jumping in the whole vat of mayonnaise. Don't I threaten wonder her with who, a good time. I wonder who's the big spoon and the little spoon in that relationship. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> I had to go when you said I, I, his I, height, I, when you mentioned his height. That's what made me have to ask that question. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> that's fucked up. Hey, oh. hey! I'm just saying. Demonstrated for me, uh, demonstrated to me the other day when I did a live talking about the birth control industry, talking about the government incentive to sterilize women, and recognizing that it has been by and large successful via the pollution in public education, making sure people can't read what they feel. Women's health, women's health, my reproductive rights, my body, my choice. Propaganda created by governments and corporations to make sure that you poison yourself, that you can't have as many kids as they used to be able to have before this poison existed. The poison that's in our food, Monsanto. For the first time ever, people are starting to take a stance. For the first time ever, she did it again. For the first time, first time ever. ever. Whatever. <laughs> what is she doing? Auditioning for Mean Girls? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she wants to be in the reboot of Bring It On. Oh, damn. <laughs> so she, yeah, but she wants to be a Toro. She don't want to be a Chloe. The clothes ain't going to accept her. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> Maybe Maybe she wants to do it. Now, nah, what's the one? Maybe she want to be in new drum line. Oh, she got with what rhythm? There this, you woman, go. this woman can't even dance on beat, and you expect her to be on beat with a drum? <laughs> Maybe she's gonna try out to be a majorette. <laughs> they gonna put she her gonna, all the way at the top of the of, of the bleachers. You no, she gonna it. right. She gonna no. She gonna end up kicking herself. Shit! You ever see you ever see a black woman kick herself in the head? <laughs> Candace be the first one, right? Just straight poop. 
Yeah. And the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm playing that imagery out of my head right now. I feel you. You don't have to. You don't I'm have playing to the imagery sand. out of my head right now. I ain't gonna hold you. You might have to dump sand on the floor for her to do a perfect cartwheel. <sighs> well, you know what? No, you need drums. You know what? You gotta get steel drums. Can't use the regular. Uh, what do you call it? Something tells me she'll be off beat with that too, because even with the steel drums, how are you on beat with it's, it's, steel drums? Because even with the steel, get out of here, bro. Because even with a steel drum, you got to still hit a certain way to get a certain sound. White like, people you, stay off beat, so she be right at home. <laughs> she be right at home. And shout out to Black Logic for the swanny. I appreciate it. Oh my God, bro! This I hate this, this woman, man. Let's say let we only got a minute left for this thing. I she could say a whole bunch of BS in this last minute. I, I, yes, I can could. guarantee it. She already said that she already said so much up to this point. And starting to recognize that. So I remain optimistic every single day. I express this to Joe Biden, not just for Black America, but for all of America, because for the first time it feels like we are ready to hear the truth. And for that, oh I am grateful for COVID. I am grateful. For what? What? <laughs> Wait, what? Ma'am, wait a minute. Hold, hold on, on hold on, on, hold on, hold on. I gotta I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta do this. I have yet to play my drop yet. I gotta do it for this. <laughs> what did you say, nigga? <laughs> so I had to that. This I, was I perfect. feel you. That's a beautiful that drop. Long to play that. <laughs> Shout out to Aunt that is a beautiful drop. That's a beautiful drop. <laughs> I had to, I had, I had Damn. to play that one. Okay, number one, I gotta get this out of the way. What do you mean, thank God for, for the coffee venereal disease? Ma'am, maybe because your net worth went up. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why you said it. But ma'am, um, you do know that's part of the reason why we're in the bullshit we're in, right? You, you, the people that you support and the people you hate both collaborated to screw with you. But okay, that's fine. Number two, why was she doing the hand movements like old oh boy and Willie Dynamite? <laughs> Talking about you got to have vision. <laughs> huh? This chick is maybe that maybe that was her just to show how black she is that she watches black exploitation movies. Does she even know what a black exploitation movie is? I bet you she couldn't even tell you one. I can, probably name, I can probably like name five off the top of my head. Shit, I can give you 20 right now. Mm -hmm. But the point is, she's not serious. This is theater. I that's what I'm telling people. It's all entertainment. It's all entertainment. That's why it's so easy for me and KG to get up here and just clown her. Because we're not taking anything that she says seriously. Again, she titled her video, I'm having the blackest week ever. And she did not even tell why she was. She's except Joe Button. Except for her going, yeah, her going on Joe Button. And Piers Morgan going to talk to Charlemagne and uh, DJ Envy on The Breakfast Club. Panther Strike, if you think white supremacy doesn't pay attention to her, you're not really seeing what's going on out here. But shout out to you for giving Tori and twenty five dollars. Yeah, shout out to you for uh, paying the strike. But yeah, I have to agree with KG. Dub S pays attention <laughs> to all of Dub the, S all gives of her the, damn near all of these black entities. They give even her, six, her. Yeah, they give her six digit views on Twitter, putting money in her pocket every time she posts something. Fox News still has her in the Rolodex. You heard her just now. Now all of a sudden she's going on alleged black platforms. What do you that's, mean they're not paying attention to her? That's why I said is she trying to. Enter Brian, you might have to show. Era. You might have to show that that article I sent you just now. And, sh and also, before we go any further, shout out to uh, Scoop two thousand three for the five. He said nothing worse than a self hating ninja with a platform claiming to speak for us. That is facts. We're we're examining one right now, and the thing is, it's so many more out there like her, and unfortunately, there are some that are worse than her. Yeah, believe it or not, there are some out there that are worse than her. It's just that she has a face and she has a name and she has a bigger following. But just because she has the face and a following in the name doesn't mean she's the worst one out of the bunch. Trust me on that. Y'all been mm -hmm. watching my channel for a while. Y'all seen some people that are worse than she is. Exactly. 
for how far the government went with censorship. I'm grateful for how, how, how far they went in terms of trying to have autonomy over our bodies. We no, no longer had autonomy. They were trying to force vaccinate people. They were trying to say, demand vaccination in the workplace. And I think what happened is they overplayed their hand. You know what I've also noticed too, and I've said this before, she's going out of her way to try and sound controversial and she's really not. No, like with the, stuff she, be- with, with, with the way with what she's just talking about right here, because she knows it's a quote unquote controversial topic. Mm-hmm. So she's saying the opposite of what she feels that the bunch is saying to try to make herself sound like she's some kind of a warrior. Yeah, but there's a way to be controversial and still get the message out with the truth. Exactly. And the thing is, even with what she's saying right here, it's been said before. It's not like she's the first person to have said what she said. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make She's just, no, she's trying to be shocking. Exactly. People don't and like shock shocking. Value. Yeah, she's trying to do the shock value thing. And the thing is, that's all she has. That's all she's been ever since she came into prominence is mm-hmm. shock value. Right. And her shock value has run out. She just doesn't realize it yet. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm still getting, you're still getting traction on your, on your Twitter page. That's great. It's not going to last. I promise you, Elon is going to sell that app after the election. I promise you. Oh, yeah. I had to talk about him yesterday in my live stream. I had two topics to discuss about him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Let's knock out these last couple of minutes. And uh, we have, yeah, you know, I saw the title of the article. We're going to have to go over that today, like mm-hmm. right after this video is over. Mm-hmm. Just the title alone is very weird. Yeah. And we're on the brink of a mass awakening. So I want to remind everybody to, to feel positive every single day. I hope if you listen to my podcast, you walk away and you feel informed, but you don't feel sad. I don't want you to walk away mad, sad. I want you to say, now that I'm informed, I can now walk into society and demand the change that we all deserve. Hey, guys. Okay. And that's the end of that. Okay. So we have made it to the end well, of that part, but KG sent over a, uh, an article. That was posted on February the 5th, 2024 mm-hmm. from Forbes titled Candace Owens, the voice of black conservatives in the 2024 election. In well, they're definitely not talking Month. to us. Right. <laughs> they're de- they're during, definitely not talking to us. <laughs> during Black History Month, she wrote this. Mm-hmm. But you're right. They're not paying attention to her. And happy. And I don't know about you, but let me zoom in on this pic. I don't know if you can enlarge. I can't. Let me zoom in on this picture right quick because my God, look at them eyes. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, I know it's the eye right makeup. There. I know it's the eye makeup, but my goodness, they made her look like she has the blackest eyes. Mm-hmm. That's evil, right there, bro. Yeah, straight up. That's straight evil right there. Because it's funny. She don't say this outside. I swear this woman, this woman, if if she's like, you've seen, you seen Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Mm-hmm. She could be the black version of Azula. Ooh. And anybody in the chat that watches that show or even the live action show or both, and know the Azula character, y'all know exactly who I'm talking about and how crazy that chick was. Candace is right, is like right there. The only thing is that she can't bend fire or lightning. Thank God for that. But let's go ahead and see what Forbes is talking about. Start from the second paragraph. Just the second one, not the first one? No, the first one is just a backstory about her. Okay. This year, Black Voices... (laughs) like Candace and many others across the socio-political spectrum will be at the forefront as Americans prepare to vote for our next president. It's prudent that the black community embrace and be open to hearing varying perspectives to widen our understanding and vote in the best interests of our families and community. With our 2024 presidential race headed toward a face-off between President Biden and former President Trump, 
the black vote has once again been thrust to the forefront of national news. According to a report from The Hill, a November poll by The New York Times and Siena College found that 22 percent of voters in six battleground states said they would support former President Trump in this year's election. While 71 percent of black voters said they would support Biden, the numbers for Trump are the highest percentage a Republican presidential candidate has seen in half a century. One in five voters suggested they wouldn't vote for either candidate. With black Americans growing more displeased with the Biden administration, we are left searching for a solution to a broken two party system with less than desirable candidate choices on both sides of the political spectrum. This is why highly visible black, moderate, liberal and conservative figures like Owens are critical to the outcome of the upcoming presidential election and how we shape ourselves as a forever evolving and diverse community of black Americans. Black Americans? What? She, never mind. She Is don't there, even play that. She don't even rep that. Exactly. You want me to read more, or was that it? No, because this is just her talking to Candace Owens. Okay. So they have elevated or they're trying to elevate her. They said the voice of black conservatives, again, we would not fit into that category. Right. I've always and told people that black people, for the most part, a lot of black people have a conservative type of mindset, but to label ourselves black conservatives, especially with the likes of them, don't even try to throw us in that category. Well, at least not me. I can't speak for everybody else. Registered independent. Yeah, but the, we know what black conservatives mean. He's talking about the people online. Oh, yeah. Like the ones like her, like the um, yeah. ones we was mentioning, you know, the examples we were given. But but here's the thing. But at this person in uh, Wild J said, most of the black conservatives don't fuck with her. Exactly. That's why I can't wait for November the 5th to come, because not only will their grip be over, but they're also going to have an internal civil war. I was going to start before that. The Grifters are going to have one big internal conflict, and that is going to be even more interesting than when November 5th comes, because, you know, it's going to be something that's going to brew. It's going to brew before that happens. Then I'm sure it's going to be something that happens on the day and then after the day. Can we just call it the Summer of Sambos? <laughs> I'm telling you, the wars that they're going to have online on Twitter, boy, we're going to have so much content this summer, boy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine a Twitter space with all of them in there and they're going to be in there cussing each other out. And I'm just going to be sitting there laughing. I might fuck around and stream it live. Yeah, yeah that'll be very, that's going to be, they listen, they all going to be getting out of character. Oh my God. Candace going to be dropping F words like every three sentences. Like we haven't heard her already do it. Shh. It's, oh yeah, Chris. Yeah, they don't mess with a lot of. Listen, a lot of them don't mess no. with each other like that. Listen, Chris, y'all got to go on X. Put in Candace Owens' name. The only people that put her over are white folk. And the, the thing black is, folk don't fuck with her. The thing is, they're trying. They're literally fighting to get the big biscuit. Mm -hmm. They don't want the crumbs anymore. They want they 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 want that big giant butter biscuit sprinkled with butter dust. Butter dust. Oh, by the way, did you see the 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 Coonfinity gauntlet? I saw it, and you noticed that I put the biscuit on every stone and color coded yes, it, and you see the little butter dust sprinkled uh -huh. around it. Yes, sir. You were <laughs> the inspiration for that. You told me that you know you had brought that up and said I should make that, and I did. It wasn't even hard to make either. Yeah. So I so I replaced the the stack of biscuits with the Coonfinity gauntlet, and it has a biscuit on every. Yeah. On every uh stone, <laughs> yes, the, confin the confinity stones. Some of Sambo's is coming. Hey, you might have to put Conscious Lee there too. At first, I was going to say consciously, and I had to think about it for a second, but I definitely heard that name before. Yeah, you got, you have to do a little research on that one. But uh, but uh, th this Candace man, I don't. If, if, just, there is a, if there is a God, she's got to go away November 5th. She's got to go away. She's she's more than worn out her welcome. Yeah, that I know. But you know what it is? 
she's still useful to them. That's why, yeah, that's why she's still around. Because we've seen people in her position and they gotten rid of them. Rob Smith, where the hell are you, sir? He ran over to CNN to air out his grievances. Yeah, but after that, and you you didn't get no love. Mm -hmm. What happened? You you took a social media break. Get outside, sir. We need to know you're okay. Hmm. So we can clown you some more. Let me tell you something. If Trump loses, man, we might just have to watch Terrence K. He might be on suicide watch. <laughs> wow. No, I'm serious. He might break every alcohol bottle. He might throw... He he might go down the road to Orlando Brown. Oh, oh so he's so he going on a downward spiral. He might do a video and he's just he's just caked in, in his pancake mix. I don't even want that imagery. We already seen what he did with a bucket of chicken. But yeah, but like we also said, the black conservatives get no love on, on social media. I mean, we, we were they cooking, really don't. We were cooking Greg Foreman the other day. <laughs> Not. Like he decided to show say something on X and we were cooking him. And he didn't even get that much traction either. Like nope. from the post that he made, and you would think he probably would because of the following he has on here. But you know, some a lot of times that doesn't translate. Nah, never. And they hate him over there too. So, you know, I mean the calling of the tribe is probably working right now. We just it's, it just hasn't hit its fever pitch yet. I think it's going to happen in the summer where people are going to be home. You're really going to see how bad the country is in the summertime mm -hmm. and people are going to get annoyed. But, you know, Candace is a, uh, the queen dead mother is about to fall. And you know what happens when the mother falls? Everything else is going to fall around her. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a house of cards. Mm -hmm. House of Coons is about to, the house of Coons is about to get foreclosed on. <laughs> about to put up an eviction notice. Shit. <laughs> she might have to go back to turning point. <sighs> turning point. They turned the corner on her ass. <laughs> hey, they need DII hires. They already got oh, some over there. Oh, these are my DD. DD, yeah. DD over there. She she fit right back in. That would be funny though. Cause then it's like, Candace, how dare you? How dare you regress? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was oh, that was going to happen regardless. Yeah, but she, I can't you believe can't, she you, can't, you can't deny the inevitable. I still can't believe she think going on Joe Biden was the blackest week ever. I still don't oh, understand that. Right again, that was a clickbait title, and like I put it in the uh, in the thumbnail that said Candace wants to come back home. I knew how people was going to respond to that, and the thing is, she can't come back. As a matter of fact, she was never here, and if she gets kicked mm -hmm. out from over there. Don't think about trying to spin the block to try to come over here because guess what? There is no home for you to come to over here. It's not welcoming or inviting, and it's definitely not going to be warm. It's going to be very cold. It's going to be very cold when she gets shut out. Oh, yeah. Much like on Game of Thrones, winter is here. She 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 only get that one season, winter. Winter. That's odd. I'm I'm shocked. I'm hearing again for the third time, and I'm still shocked that she said all that. I'm not. You better than me, bro. I'm not shocked in the least bit. I just had to end up blocking her because I got tired of seeing it. <laughs> you better than me. I, uh, the only, I, I, the I only time I see anything related to her is if you respond to something she said because it pops up in the Discord. And I'm waiting for her to block me. Oh, oh, you! Oh, yeah. <laughs> you I want her to right. block me. <laughs> oh man, bro! Try harder, and it might actually. I'm actually shocked that Witch's name hasn't blocked me as much time as I was grilling him for like a good week. Was it Dom Lecrae? But that dumb stuff he's been posting. He's still, he has to be careful. Because remember, Elon can pull his money just like that. I thought he already did. Nah, remember he gave it back to him. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I appreciate you having me on this. Oh no, this no, is no. this is um I don't know, I don't know, bro. I don't I'm a loss for words. Listen, we we pulled through and persevered together, and also with an with the aid of the chat, 
you know, keeping us Shout going. Chad. It's not easy doing this, but somebody's got to do it. Somebody's, I should say. But before we get out of here, let me acknowledge the contributors. Dana definitely shouted you, Dana. That one hundo was perfect. Was right on time. Uh, King underscore Kobe three one three scoop two thousand three DSB Black Logic and a uh, Panther Strike. Shout out to y'all. And also, uh, we just got another one. Samuel Bryan five dollars. He says, "What up, Tory and Rain?" He says, "Please do a video on the Phil rappers turn conservative pundits like Bryson Gray, Corey Yeshua, Major Williams, Tilford. Some of these people I haven't even heard of." Oh, Bryson Gray. That Bryson Gray name I, I have heard of. Yeah, Bryson Gray had a whole Twitter space the other day going in on, on white people talking about per capita. Oh, God. Oh, he, no, he had white people in their feelings. I actually had to give him credit for that. He had white people in their feelings. Yeah, you see, they love that per capita thing. Yeah. Just like when, um, uh, I don't know, did you listen to that space with Lou, with Lou I Big Fat? Yeah, I got into like the 35th minute. Bruh. I, the first 10 minutes is crazy. Oh, it's the first crazy. 10 minutes is crazy, but I listened to the whole thing. I had to break it up because it's like five hours. Mm -hmm. But it, of course, you had the usual suspects in there talking about per capita. I'm like, they love going because someone in the chat in that space literally pulled up the FBI crime stats for last year and he ran through all of them. And even after the person went through all of that, you had PC in there trying to bring up per capita. It's like, even if you bring up per capita, it doesn't matter. You're still overwhelmingly leading in these categories. It doesn't matter, but they use that as a way to try to avoid having to hear them, ha have them hear that they lead in all of these categories in these breakdowns of criminality. Or what they'll do is they'll go back to the one that black people lead in and not even by a wide margin, which is murder. Exactly. But That's no, the only one they can hang their hat on, and it's not even a, it's not even a ten percent gap between us and them. But when you look at them other categories, it's wide margins of like 30, 50, 40 uh, percent. Like it's Remember a that huge day gap. I did it? Remember yeah. that day I did it? And everything like one of them, we only had like a thousand. They were like thirteen thousand, and we we're like, what? Yeah, the hell? exactly. They make it seem like it's like like it's such a big deal that we lead in one category and not even by a huge margin. Like, come on, like, like, but that, but what they'll do is again. See, they needed that per capita because if they didn't have it, they wouldn't even be able to. And they bastardized that and don't even know how to tell that right. That's why I was glad you broke that per capita down because really, honestly, I wasn't really paying attention to how per capita worked because I never really took my time to really look it up. Mm -hmm. because of how much they use it and bastardize it just like they bastardize the word woke but that's another conversation for another day but mm -hmm. yeah kg tell the people what you're about to have coming up because i think you said you're about to go live soon yes in about one hour family i will be live again we have to look at candace owens talking about her blackest week ever but you end up on fresh and fit and mm -hmm. yes she brought up george floyd of which is going to be did. very interesting of course she did well, tomorrow I will be uploading my video about the comments that Elijah Schaefer made towards Holly Bailey and how Twitter pretty much dragged him all the way to hell and back, literally. And also, I'm going to be doing a members only stream tomorrow. So if y'all are a member of the channel, I will be doing a members only midday stream tomorrow about um, this documentary that I found on here about um elliot roger i actually watched it and man when i tell you i thought i knew as much as possible about this dude mm -hmm. i didn't know enough and this documentary that's like an hour long broke it all the way down i'm talking about from quotes statements videos and all types of stuff this guy i, I caught he was the incel psycho simp like in more ways than one but we'll if y'all are a member of the channel y'all will be getting that one tomorrow i still have one question though What's maybe that? before we we get into this later if you as a husband <clears throat> if you were a husband right would you feel comfortable with your wife going to like podcast with other men without you I Even would, if it's for business purposes, I would question it, or I would try to first off know who this person is, 
you know, build a relationship with that person and not like have it be some complete stranger or at the very most be there in the room when they're doing it. OK, now, would you be comfortable with your wife flying around everywhere going to sit down with other men? No, you would have to start questioning it, if you, especially if you're not there. Oh, no. Nah, so right. like something. Yeah. Like you got to like kind of side out that because like especially wife- especially since especially in Candace's situation, she's still technically a new mother. Like, why aren't you at home with your with technically is still technically a newborn because the child was born in what November? But they yeah, but they got a nanny. Remember that. So the nanny's more. Never mind. I'm not even gonna go there. That, that, I know I'm, what you're going to say. I'm not even gonna disrespect it, but my thing is, nah, my wife ain't going nowhere. You couldn't do that via Zoom, right? You had to fly all the way to Miami to go sit down and talk to them. That's why I said, who was the big and little spoon in that relationship? Facts. All right, y'all. We about to get up out of here. Thank you all for coming, you know, to spend a little time. Was that? You want to answer answer Shebrew Copper's question? Oh, who? Oh. (laughs) Who is Rob Smith? Uh, Rob Smith is or was at this point, probably this individual, um, this black man, black conservative, very off code. Also in the academy, married to a white man who one day went to this event out there. I believe it wasn't it a Charlie Kirk event, a turning point USA, USA event. And he thought he could go up in there and say it was want. after it was, it like was a, after. Yeah, it was a different event. It was okay. it was something not connected with that. L- with listen, American I can't event. keep up with it. But he went to some event. It was a lot of white people there. And those white guys out there pretty much clowned him and ran him out the room. Then he aired his grievances out to CNN of all people, because it's like if you're a black conservative, you know, it's kind of a written rule that you shouldn't be going to talk to CNN, a.k.a. the ops. And he went and sat sat down with Abby Phillip and aired out his grievances about the whole situation. And he got clowned again. So he got clowned for being ran out of the event. Then he got clowned even more for going to sit down with CNN to tell them and cry at to them about what happened. So I mean, he just made his situation even worse. But yeah, that's basically that's that's a that's a summary of the last time we heard about Rod Smith. But there's so much more that you can unpack about this dude even before then. Yeah, and he, we haven't heard from him since, which is why I said we need to know that you're okay. Yeah, so we could climb yeah. it again. <laughs> and another one that's starting to get on my nerves too, and I didn't even realize he was in the academy until I started seeing more videos pop up of him. Is that Xavier Derusso? Oh yeah, yeah, he in the academy. Yeah, that, man, listen. I saw some videos of him and, and, all the, and all the stuff that he's been saying and doing. Now, that's another one right there who reminds me of Rob Smith. He didn't block you yet? But I think Rob Smith is not as flamboyant as Xavier nah. is. Not even close. Wait, Xavier, not- Xavier is like almost tiptoeing into the, the territory of a Billy Porter. I have to ask. He didn't He didn't block you yet? Who? Xavier? Um, I don't know. I don't think he has. I don't go to. I don't Damn go to you lucky, bro. The only time, I, listen, the only time I be knowing about when the stuff that he be doing is when um the amazing Lucas be clowning him. Yeah, Damn that's you. the only time I. That's the only time I, I I acknowledge that the guy even even exists. Oh, say 1977. The nanny is not black. Of course not. Come on now. Now you know Candace ain't hiring no black nanny. Come on now. You don't want her husband getting no. Fever she, pitches. No, she's probably afraid her husband. <coughs> her husband might have a good time. That what I'm talking about. I bet you she, <laughs> bet he and the nanny be sitting down at their kitchen table, be talking, and they be laughing. Right. <laughs> but yeah, let yeah, we about to get up out of here, y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll be back. I'll be back on here tomorrow. Yes, sir. <laughs>